Good morning, everybody, and happy Sunday to you. I want to read something in my one-year Bible that I read that just blessed my heart. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Consider it all joy, my brethren, my sisterin. Consider it all joy, everyone, when you counter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing verse 5 but if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of god who gives to all generously and without reproach and it will be given to him but he must ask in faith without any doubting for the one who doubts is like the serp of the sea driven and tossed by the wind for that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. Oh, that's verse 7. So I read James chapter 1, verses 1 through 7 in the New American Standard Bible Version. And I loved this Charles Stanley commentary, and I have to read it. How does God teach me perseverance? Perseverance has been defined as accepting difficult situations as from God without giving him a deadline for their removal. Isn't that good? We know we need to learn endurance, but we generally shun the process by which it takes root in our lives. Ours is the now generation. We want everything immediately. We refuse to wait for the Lord's direction or provision. So we either give in to discouragement or move ahead on our own initiative. However, rejecting God because we do not get our own way or running ahead of his timing are costly and disappointing courses of action. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. The Thessalonians were doing this successfully and Paul commended them for staying firm in the faith even though they faced terrible opposition. He wrote, your faith is greatly enlarged and the love of each one of you towards one another grows ever greater. Therefore, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions which you endure so that you will be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which indeed you are suffering. Second Thessalonians 1 verses 3 through 5. Their troubles were not causing them to fall away. Amen to that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Their troubles were not causing them to fall away. Rather, the Thessalonians were trusting the Lord and maturing in their relationship with him. And through their difficulties, God was teaching them abiding hope and perseverance that nothing could destroy. Likewise, he may allow us to experience difficulties or to wait for relief from some situations or obstacles for several reasons. So sometimes we're waiting why, and here's some Dr. Charles Stanley uh, points. I think they're excellent. The Lord is teaching us discipline and endurance through waiting. Yes. God is using the adversity to reveal hidden sin in our lives. Yes, definitely. The Lord wants to teach us to depend on him, not on ourselves or others. God is molding our character so we will honor him with our lives. God wants to teach us to trust his ways and timing and to learn that they are best. And so, you know, perseverance is tough. I mean, I've been there. You've been there. We wait on the Lord and we just get so uh, tired and weary and downcast sometimes. But God is working through the waiting. God is working through the trials, tests, troubles, death, persecution, pain, um, lack, whatever we're going through. May the Lord help us to persevere to endure, and even to be joyful. Hey, Lord, how are you going to solve this problem? Hey, Lord, how are you going to use me in the midst of this situation? You know, we don't we don't understand God's ways. Like it says in Isaiah, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord for us. The heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts and your thoughts and my ways than your ways. And it's true. God is doing something far above and beyond what we can ever imagine, but we have to wait and we have to persevere and keep pressing through and know that just like this definition, I love it. Perseverance has been defined as accepting difficult situations as from God, God's hand is in it, 
without giving him a deadline for their removal. And so, Lord, I thank you for the book of James. I thank you that I was able to start it this morning. I thank you for the freedom in America that we have to read our Bibles, Lord. I think of all the people in Ukraine who are cold, who are without electricity, who uh, may not have their Bibles, Lord. You know so many people are suffering in Russia and Ukraine. We pray for the for your help, for your intervention. I pray for all of the um, relief efforts, God. Please, Jesus, be with that situation. I pray that World War III would not break out, Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe, Lord. And so we run into the name of you, Jesus. We praise the name of the Lord. We worship you for who you are. You are the great I am, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Yeshua, our Savior. You are our true shalom, Lord. We don't have to worry about tomorrow. We trust in you for today today, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you told Mary, his name shall be called Emmanuel, for he will save his people from their sins. And we are so thankful for you, Jesus. Your name is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. You are Al Roy, the God who sees. You're Al Kanai, a jealous God. You are Jehovah Nisi. Your banner of love is over us. You're Hashem, the name, the most beautiful name over all of the earth. You are Elohim, creator of heavens and earth. You are Al Shaddai, God Almighty. You are Adonai, our master. We worship you, master, master Jesus, rabbi, our teacher, Holy Spirit, the one who indwells us. Father, our creator, we worship you, the Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, and Son. We love you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We're desperate for your intervention. We're desperate for your revelation. We're desperate for your touch, even conviction, Lord. Please don't let us be numb to sin. This world is so evil and depraved. It's so easy to watch commercials or watch things on TV or hear something on the radio. And we get um, desensitized. Lord, in the name of Jesus, don't let us be, de be desensitized or numb to sin, Lord. We're in the world, but not of the world. Help us this Thanksgiving as we may interact with family and friends who don't know you. Maybe they're gay. Maybe they're backslidden. Maybe they're into fornication. Help us to love on them as you would, God. You, you dined with uh, tax collectors and sinners, Father. So in Thanksgiving, this beautiful day set aside in our country to give thanks to you, God. Help us to, to have wisdom in how we interact with our family members, God. And we ask for forgiveness of all of our sins, Lord. You said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. We don't want to cast stones at people. We don't want to judge people. We don't want to be critical. So forgive us, Lord. We do not want to be Pharisees. We want to be holy and set apart for you, dear God. Go ahead. Go with Splash. I'll give you your snack. Go. Go ahead. Don't take it off. Go. Go. Go with Splash and then I'll give you your snack. Father, thank you for Isaac being home and being healthy. Lord, I'm not in Loma Linda in a hospital bed somewhere, Lord, or an emergency um, ambulance. God, I'm so thankful, Lord. Even though raising a son, a teenaged boy with autism is tough, Lord, I am ever so thankful that I get to be his mom. I thank you for my daughter, Olivia Grace. Would you bless her and keep her healthy as she's preparing for the recital, Lord Jesus? May it be God honoring in every way, shape, and form, Lord. Even the people that come that don't know you, Jesus, may they come to know you even through dance, even through watching these girls give their bodies in dance to you, Lord Jesus, as they dance so beautifully, so skillfully, even from the little littles all the way up to the seniors. Bless um, TTP and I thank you for Christian Dance Studios and Christian athletics and Christian coaches and teachers and pastors and leaders and youth leaders. I'm so thankful, Lord. And dear God, I just want to pray for this horrible situation in Idaho, Lord. My heart is so broken for these college kids that lost their lives, Lord. I just pray for these families, God. Would you just wrap your arms of love around them, Lord? These terrible but murder. I pray that the perpetrator would be found. I pray for the community in Idaho. Wrap your arms of love around them, Lord. These senseless murders that just breaks my heart. And we know what's happening all over, all over our state. There's atrocities and terrible things that happen, even over the whole world. Please, Jesus, just comfort those families. Give them your perfect peace, Lord. And we know the days are short, Lord. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We pray for the prodigals. Draw them back. Woo them back with cords of love. Woo them back, Lord Jesus. It's your kindness that leads to repentance. I pray for my brother. I pray for my nieces, for all of my family members that don't know you, that they would not die, that they would not say their last breath without saying yes to you, Jesus. Same for Barbara's daughter, for Grace's daughter, for Frank, for Rob, for Sarah, for Jose, 
for Calvin and Jeanette, for Adil and Autumn and Petey, for all of those who were raised in the church who have walked away. I pray for their souls, Lord, please, for Margaret Bravo's um, kids that don't know you, Lord, for all the grandkids and children represented right now in this prayer time who don't know you. There are many, Lord. We could go on and on and spend hours listing the people that we know and love that don't know you. I pray for my neighbors here in Ontario. I pray for their souls and their salvation, Lord. Use us, God. Use um, K-Wave. Use radio stations, use scriptures, use co-workers, use grocery store checkouts, use, wake them up in the middle of the night and prompt them with the verse that they remember from when they were little, Lord Jesus. Use anything, use a dream, God, a vision. May they pick up their Bible and read and want to know the truth, Lord. These days are so evil and we know that it's coming soon, Lord. We know we're going to hear that trumpet sound. So may we be rapture ready, Lord. May we have our... um oil lamp wicks trimmed and the oil filled to the brim waiting watching this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it come what may we're going to pray come what may we're going to praise we worship you god we pray for marriages that they would be strong and sound in you that you would help husbands to read the bible with their wives help wives to submit to their husbands and not to care so much about their looks or about their uh, social media or about their bodies or things like that but help them to care about the inner person of the heart and that's for me too for all of us women help us to to Allow you to make us beautiful on the inside, Jesus. That's what matters most, Father. And as wives, help us, Lord, as we serve our families. Help us to serve you first, Jesus. And help every single one of us praying right now to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And then all these things will be added. I want to lift up my mom as she's been feeling sick from a cough and congestion as well as... um. Shami, Lord, touch her body, heal her, God, completely and for you. And I pray for him. I pray for his Parkinson's, that you would give him good days where he could enjoy this beautiful weather, Lord. Help him to understand, Lord. I pray also for my friend's mom, Donna, who's suffering from Alzheimer's, Lord. I pray for those grieving and mourning this Thanksgiving, for Vivian, for Sherry Tima, Lord, for Kathy, for Francie, for all of the widows, Lord Jesus, for Kayla, Miss Kayla, Olivia's um, dance teacher who lost her husband tragically a couple of years years ago i pray for her come for her i pray for sandra and jimmy as they grieve the loss of thomas i pray for sergio palacios and the Popolardo family who lost nani victoria in 2021 and for all of those who are grieving and mourning a loss lord the holidays can be so tough would you just comfort them would you give them joy and give them peace and fill their cups to overflow and remind them that heaven is real and we're going to be with you one day forever and ever and ever we cannot wait lord jesus help us to be women and men of your word to read your bible to meditate on it to study and as it says in james help us to persevere god and we know you're coming soon give us endurance give us grit and grace in jesus precious name we pray Amen.